Okay, we want to attempt to visualize an interval of convergence for an infinite series. And I'm going to attempt to set this up using uh, hopefully a familiar friend called a geometric series. And if you look here, I have three infinite series. They're all written slightly different. Um, they, they, they sort of look the same, but let's just go ahead and see what we have here. Okay, if I, if I start to let n take on values from 1 to infinity in this first series here, uh, my first term is going to be 3. I just plugged 1 in right here. Um, your second term is going to be when n equals 2. So you plug 2 in here and, and do this arithmetic, and you should get 3 halves. Your third term is going to be 3 fourths, uh, then 3 eighths, and it's going to do this forever. Okay, let's just let's do the same thing for the second and the third series here. This time, this guy is starting out at zero, so your first term actually corresponds to n equals zero, and its first term is also going to be three because one half to the zero power is one. Uh, your second term is going to be when n equals one. Your third term is going to be when n equals two, and it looks like it's generating the exact same series as above. And it is. So the, these two, these first two, see, these first two series are actually the same. Okay, now let's see what's different about the third one. The third one, uh, n is starting at one, so I just plug one in, and my very first term is three halves. My second term is three fourths, and it looks like from here on out it's going to look like the above. We just started at a different place, so we'll do one more here to to maintain balance. Okay, so there you go. You have three infinitely long geometric series. Now, I, I chose these because most pre-calc classes introduce this concept of a of a series, um, in particular geometric series, and they they tell you that that if you have an infinitely long geometric series and your common ratio okay what do I mean by common ratio okay well I'll come back to this in a minute but by common ratio I, I basically mean what am I multiplying each term by to get to the next term well what do I multiply 3 by to get to here and I multiply by 1 half I multiply 3 halves by 1 half to get to 3 fourths. And I'm, I'm just going to keep doing this forever. That's by definition what a geometric uh, sequence is. Okay. Um, now, if this R value, which happens to be living right here, it's usually the thing that's getting raised to the nth power. So this would be your R value right here. Notice this in the same place in all three series. If that R value, if the absolute value of it, I should say, is less than 1, then then your sum then uh, that this infinite series um, will equal the following it will equal uh, a sub 1 over 1 minus r will be the sum okay uh, it will be the infinite sum I should say Okay, so let's just really quickly do these for, for these different examples. What's the first term of this series? Well, it's 3 over 1 minus r is 1 half. Now, if you do that, you'll get 6. Okay, what does that mean? That means that if you just start adding all of these terms, and you, you had an infinite length of time to do this, um, that the sum, that the, the number you would be approaching would be 6. In fact, um, if you did do this forever, it actually equals 6. Okay, we say that this series right here converges to 6. Well, since this is the exact same series as above, it's also going to be 6. And this guy right here actually has a different first term. So I, I write 3 halves is my first term. That's my a sub 1 term over 1 minus one half and if you do that real quick I think you'll see that that it equals three okay so if you had an, an infinite length of time and you added up all these guys and you just kept doing it and doing it and doing it your sum would approach the number three okay now let's take a look at this series this infinite series and if you look at it very carefully and just start generating terms your first term is one your second term is x your third term is x squared 
third your fourth term is x cubed and it will do this forever okay and again if you look at it carefully enough you'll notice that it's geometric now if you're not convinced it's geometric just ask yourself what are you multiplying by to get to your next term and every time we're multiplying by x I'm, I'm multiplying by x to get to my next term by definition is geometric and we could say that we have a common r value or a common ratio of x okay um, now our pre-calc teacher taught us hopefully that if our r value if the absolute value of our r value is less than one okay if that condition is met then we can say that this this series, this infinitely long series, is actually equal to the first term of the series, which in this case is 1, divided by 1 minus that common ratio. Okay, well, let's just fill in um, what all of these are. Uh, your very first term of this series is 1, and your common ratio, actually, let's not do it there. I don't want to do it there. Let's do it right here instead. Your first term is 1 and your common ratio is x. So that, that kind of looks like a function to me. Okay, now if I rewrite what it's actually equal to, it's equal to this infinitely long sum, this infinitely long polynomial. And I know that there's going to be equality here for only certain values of x. In other words, when the absolute value of x is less than 1. If that condition is met, then I can go ahead and use this formula to calculate the sum. Okay, you can just imagine if x was 2, just pretend, just plug in 2 for x and you'll, you'll see in instantly that, that we can't have equality here. This is just going to blow up to infinity and this will actually be, uh, looks like negative 1. And so we don't have equality there, but for values that, that fit this condition, we will have equality. Okay, so now, um, what's another way to think about this? Well, another way to write that is x is less than 1 or, uh, or greater than negative 1. Or yet another way to write it is from negative 1 to 1. Okay, this is what we call our interval of convergence. Okay, now what does that look like visually? Here comes the cool part. I'm using a program called Maple. This is Maple 16, and uh, pretty very powerful program. If you have uh, a way to to get a hold of it and play with it, it's it's really good. Okay, so the red function represents one over one minus x. Okay, that's kind of like my my sum. That's what my sum should be. The blue line represents the the polynomial. Okay, so the, just so we're clear, the blue line represents this polynomial at differing degrees um, right now the, the blue line is just a first degree so it's just the first two terms here and then the red curve is this guy and I want to know I want to know when when does the blue curve equal the red curve well let's look if I just start to to let this grow to a second degree polynomial then a third degree, a fourth degree, a fifth degree, so on and so forth, and I let the, the, the degree of the polynomial go to infinity. Now I can only let it go to 31 in this example, but you'll notice that the, the polynomial does a good job. In fact, it actually becomes 1 over 1 minus x, but only in this interval from negative 1 to 1. That is your interval of convergence. If this slider were allowed to go to 1 million, you would just see this blue line bouncing back and forth kind of like this okay but it would do that it would just keep doing that forever this blue line would never land on the curve out here so we say that that series diverge or not diverges that series converges to 1 over 1 minus x but only in between negative 1 and 1 okay real quick example here here's the sine curve and it's its infinite series, if I let it its degree go to infinity, you'll see that this interval keeps growing. In fact, I can actually construct a polynomial that will fit that sine curve on the entire real number line. Okay, so that interval of convergence is is from negative infinity to infinity. And finally, this last guy right here. Um, if you look at the blue curve approximating the red curve, 
you'll see that as the degree of the polynomial grows, the blue curve becomes the red curve, but only in between 0 and 2. So the interval of convergence here would be from 0 to 2. Now, I haven't talked about testing endpoints or any of that. I just wanted to give you a quick visual of, of what an interval of convergence was. Hope that helped. We'll see you around.